Hi, I'm Lindsay Stevens, and this is the Poetry and Yarn podcast, episode four. Um, You can catch the podcast on YouTube. You can get the audio-only version, if that's what you prefer, along with show notes with links to everything I talk about on the website at www.poetryinyarn.com. Well, it's been another week, um, and another week full of work. Um, As a tech editor, a lot of patterns kind of pass through me, and because I'm just kind of one person in the process, I don't necessarily get to see the whole thing through um, because I'm just doing the technical editing. But it's always nice when some of the designers that I work with um, will let me know that a pattern that I've tech edited is out. So Beth Graham, who's one of my clients, has recently put out these little knit washcloths, which are super cute. And she's got them styled with like baby books. And it's adorable. Um, And they're called Pat a Cloth and Box Set. And I'll put a link to those um, in the show notes. I guess washcloths are like a typical project to go to if you knit or crochet. In general, I've been, I really haven't been happy with crocheted washcloths. And I think the reason why is if you look at stitches and how they're made, crochet stitches are made with more loops of yarn than a single niche stitch. So whenever I've crocheted a washcloth and used it, it never dries. Um, You know, I can like wring out the extra water and hang it up and wait and wait. And um, yeah, it just never dries. So I think these are cute because they're knit and a knit stitch is just a single loop of yarn. So you can make them, they will work, they'll absorb enough water to be useful, but they'll dry in a reasonable time. Um, which I think is one of the benefits of knit washcloths. Um, If you've been watching the podcast, you can probably tell from the various and sundry backgrounds, I've been trying to find the best spot in my house um, to record the podcast. And basically what I've been looking for is A, decent lighting, and B, an interesting background. Um, I've discovered basically that the lighting in my house stinks. Um, you know, um, I've got to fix that. And I think I'm actually going to be going, um, to the store for light bulbs that cast kind of a, a true bluer light. Um, a lot of the energy saving light bulbs we have in our house and that a lot of people have in their houses cast kind of a yellowish glow. Um, but you can get ones that are specifically more like true light and daylight to help kind of offset that. Um, I'm also wondering if that'll kind of help me with my reading because I found if I like read in the family room for a long time that my eyes start to kind of feel weird and part of me wonders if it's like the yellowish yellowish cast of the light. So the second thing I've been looking for is an interesting background and I know a lot of people with um, crochet and knit videos have like these beautiful like yarn bin backgrounds. I will tell you the majority of my yarn um, is in my craft area in the basement. It does not look pretty. Um, I don't have like matching coordinating bins that are all the same color. I kind of feel like the things are put away for the most part, but visually the organizational discord is such that like if Martha Stewart were to come within five miles of my house, I'm kind of worried she'd spontaneously combust like um, (laughs) because it's um, it's beautiful to me, but it's not, you know, something that's classically beautiful to look at. So over the course of the next couple podcasts, I'm going to be moving around and hopefully find um, a nice spot to stick with. Some friends of mine and I were talking about gauge today, um, specifically gauge as it's listed in patterns. If a gauge is listed in a pattern, it should be the blocked gauge, not the unblocked gauge, the blocked gauge. And the reason for that is like, it doesn't really matter if you match the designer's gauge 
before blocking. What matters is that your finished piece looks the way you want it to look. Um, so really what's critical is the blocked gauge, the blocked gauge, um, you know, and a lot of designers are good about putting in information about how they block. Um, although that's going to vary a bit depending on your yarn. There are a lot of patterns that will write things like for scarves or jewelry. Gauge is not critical. I cry. I cry tears inside when I read that. Um, I understand why people write it because you know, with some things, there's flexibility in sizing. Like, you're not really going to care if your stuffed animal is 10 inches long or 10 and a quarter inches long. Like, you'll be fine either way. Um, the main reason I don't agree with writing just gauge is not critical is because the difference in gauge affects your yarn requirements. So, um... Yes, for like a scarf or a stuffed animal or like a pendant piece, gauge may not be critical. But if you have a significantly different gauge, you're going to be using a significantly different amount of yarn than what the pattern designer did um, or necessarily calls for. So that's why I'm always happy when I see something along the lines of gauge is not critical. But um, it will affect your requirements. Here is the gauge that we got for this item. Because that gives you the option to try and match the gauge or you can ignore it. But you know, like, if you ignore it, there's always a chance that the one skein pattern is not going to be a one skein pattern. Um, ever since this whole gauge conversation with my friends where I kind of like jumped up on my soapbox and I'm like, blocked gauge, only blocked gauge people. Um, I've been racking my brain to think about a situation where unblocked gauge would be important. The only thing that came to mind is when you're making a garment, really what matters is your final gauge or your final measurements after blocking. But a lot of times as like a pattern writing, I don't want to say pattern writing phenomena, more like a pattern writing standard would be to say like work even until piece measures 17 inches. Well, there's like a little bit of a fudge factor there because what they mean is 17 inches in the finished measurements, but you're highly unlikely while you're knitting or crocheting to stop, block the entire thing you've been working on and say, nope, that's 16 and a quarter inches. So I'm going to go for a couple more rows, re-block and measure again. So that's the only situation I could think of where it might be helpful to have unblocked gauge listed. But then again, with everything, what really matters is the final blocked gauge. You've got to match that final blocked gauge, um, especially for garments, for things that are fitted like socks. Um, the final blocked gauge is what matters. That's what you've got to hit um, if you want the thing to actually fit. Um, so those are kind of my thoughts on gauge that have popped up today as um, I've been working and chatting with people. If you have questions about gauge um, or anything in general with crochet or knitting, please feel free to um, either leave a comment on the YouTube page, on the blog post, or email support at poetryinyarn.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at poetryinyarn.com. Um, I'm happy to take what you're interested in and um, talk about it and help you out. Uh, a note next week is actually a religious holiday of mine, so there won't be a podcast next week. 
Um, instead, it'll be the week after June 1st. Um, to make sure you don't miss out when we come back, um, especially because there's going to be a giveaway in that um, in that episode. Subscribe to the YouTube ch YouTube channel, and um, that way you'll get notified as soon as it goes up. Um, in the meantime, I hope you all have a fun week full of yarn craft, stitching, um, most excellent coffee and biscotti because that just makes everything better and um, doing what you love. Have a good one.